Brexit is a lot less confusing than you think. Today's video is brought to you by my Patreon, Paul Miller, who sponsored this microphone. You may or may not notice that I sound a bit different today. Let me know if you guys prefer that or if you preferred my old sound. So today we're going to try and make sense of what people actually think about Brexit and all the different divisions within Parliament. So, what I've decided to make was a graph with the x-axis being either 100% for remain, 50-50 somewhere in the middle, or 100% for leave at the end. And the y-axis is either fully support May at the top, fully against May, slash fully pro Corbyn on the line, and fully against Corbyn on the bottom. And we're gonna see how the different individuals in the Brexit process feel about Brexit through time. So, Theresa May publicly stated her support for the UK remaining in the EU during the 2016 referendum campaign, but did not campaign extensively in the referendum and criticise aspects of the EU in her speech. Now, she became Prime Minister promising to enact Brexit, so she moves towards the leave. During her Florence House speech, she urged the European Union to maintain a transition period to ease the transition for businesses, moving towards the Remain. And of course, she proposed the Chequers deal, which aimed to keep Britain assigned to the rules of the Common Rulebook, one of which is written by the EU, but adhered to by the UK in order to keep frictionless trade at the border between the UK and the EU, particularly in Northern Ireland. Again, so that's moving towards Remain because she's choosing to adhere to European Union customs rules. And then she agreed to negotiate an Irish backstop, which in the event that future trade deal could not be reached with the EU, the UK will stay in a form of customs union and Northern Ireland will stay in the single market. Again, that's closer to remain than it is to leave. So she's kind of halfway in between remain and leave right now, but closer to remain than leave. Some would argue closer to leave than remain, but she's somewhere in this area, let's say. So now we've done Theresa May, let's do Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn is obviously completely against May, but pro-Corbyn, hence why he's on the line. Um, Corbyn said he was 7 to 10 or 7.5 to 10 for staying in the EU, but he campaigned for Remain, though he was criticised for his lack of enthusiasm. So there's people out there that speculate that Corbyn was a Brexiteer in secret. He's just lying about his support for the Brexit process. After the vote to leave, Labour were forced to accept Brexit, but outlined six key tests to the deal, which the deal must have adhered to for them to support it. One of them included remaining in the customs union, and so Jeremy Corbyn, along with the Labour Party he represented, moved slightly towards leave because they had to accept the deal, but it wasn't completely towards leave because they wanted to remain in a customs union. In July 2017, Corbyn said that Britain could not remain in the single market after Brexit, saying membership of the single market was dependent on membership of the EU. Again, moving towards leave because it means leaving the institutions that mean being part of being the European Union. But in June 2018, Corbyn called for a new single market deal with the UK, maintaining full access to the EU internal markets. In other words, he backtracked on his previous statement and he wanted to remain in the EU's internal markets more and therefore he moved towards remain. And in October 2018, Labour adopted the possibility of a second referendum, which could or could not include the option to remain. That's still to be speculated and it's been speculated amongst the rest of the Labour Party as well. But many people assume that a second referendum would um, be a, a vote to remain if that option was included, and therefore I've put him closer to Remain. So Corbyn has, has gradually moved closer to Remain in general. However, it was found yesterday that Labour members were more opposed to Brexit than the individual Jeremy Corbyn was, with 72% of them thinking their leader should fully commit to a second referendum. So Corbyn himself is not really in favour of going back to the voters and remaining as much as perhaps some of his peers are in the Labour Party. So let's do Boris Johnson. Uh, Boris 
it was reported that Johnson wrote two articles for the Daily Telegraph, one for Remain and one for Leave. However, he campaigned for Leave. Now, Boris did not run in the Tory leadership election and was therefore assigned to the post of Foreign Secretary. Again, moving closer to May because by being Foreign Secretary in her government, he's supporting her government. After checkers, Boris resigned from Theresa May's cabinet, stating the checkers proposal was not doing enough to take back control of all laws, money and borders. However, he did not attack May in his resignation speech. So he moved away from May, but he was real unwilling to attack May directly. Johnson's proposal at the party conference was to chuck checkers, back May, but go for either a Canada Plus style of Brexit or prepare more for a no deal. So, because he was backing May, I put him closer to Theresa May, but because he wanted to chuck checkers, I put him closer to leave, particularly no deal is very 100% leave. But after Theresa May deferred the vote on her Brexit deal, a conservative vote of no confidence was held, with Boris appearing with freshly cut hair in an interview the day before, seemingly as though to challenge her. However, Theresa May won that vote of no confidence. So whether or not Boris Johnson still wants to back Theresa May is still questionable. He might have moved closer to her now that she won that vote. But it seems like he's been used by the European Research Group as the leader who will eventually challenge May should she resign or should she fall short in Brexit and, and face a parliamentary vote of no confidence. So let's do Owen Smith, rival to Jeremy Corbyn. Owen Smith supported to the campaign for Britain to remain part of the EU. There was a Labour Party leadership contest following the Brexit results where he moved away from supporting Jeremy Corbyn. Owen said that if he were elected, he would want either a second referendum on the final deal or a general election. Again, I'm saying that because of the views he expressed, he seems more like an adamant Remainer than Jeremy Corbyn. And he voted against triggering Article 50. After his defeat in the Labour leadership election, he has since tried to unite the party, saying we can stick with Jeremy Corbyn and we can wake up. But he seems more in favour of a second referendum than Jeremy Corbyn does. Amber Rudd campaigned to remain in the EU referendum. Of course, she became Home Secretary in Theresa May's government and therefore moved closer towards May. She didn't want Boris managing the Brexit process. Very interesting, this division between the Conservative cabinet. And she was forced to resign after the Ringwood scandal, moving away from Theresa May's government. But then she was reappointed into May's government as Work and Pension Secretary. And she proved and supported May's deal, but suggested a Norway model or even a second referendum as a solution should Parliament not be able to come up with a solution. So let's do Tom Watson. Tom Watson campaigned to remain part of the EU. After Theresa May's election result, he said a people's vote is more likely. He has since continued to support the Labour policy to hold an election and renegotiate, but still openly supports a second referendum. So let's do Anna Soubry. Anna Soubry backed the EU referendum, but campaigned for Remain. She voted to trigger Article 50 for her constituents, but she was one of 11 Conservative MPs who voted to give Parliament a vote on the final deal. And she openly criticised May after her election losses, moving away from the government and towards Remain. And she has since supported the People's Vote campaign and would resign from the Conservative whip in support of a no-confidence vote on the Prime Minister if a no-deal became government policy. Adamant Remainer, adamantly against Theresa May's government. And finally, let's just do John McDonnell. John McDonnell campaigned to remain in the EU and he became Shadow Chancellor in Corbyn's Labour Party and accepted the country voted to leave, therefore moves towards leave and moves towards... Corbyn. After the 2017 election, he wanted to form a Labour government and said a second referendum looked inevitable if May couldn't agree a deal with Parliament. However, he said that he'd only back a second referendum if the option to remain wasn't present and said it could lead to social unrest. So all these people with all these moving opinions can get very confusing with all these lines and all this map, but I thought I'd simplify the map. First, let's take a look at the Conservative Party. So, 
In the Conservative Party, you have the cabinet members. Now, there are Remainers in the cabinet, and there are Leavers in the cabinet. So the Remainers are people like Amber Rudd, Philip Hammond, Sajid Javid. The Leavers in the cabinet are Chris Grayling, Michael Gove. And they all support Theresa May to varying degrees. But then there are those that have either left the cabinet or do not support Theresa May and her government in the Conservative Party, both on the Remain side and the Leave side. On the Remain side, you have people like Anna Surbury, Ken Clark. On the Leave side, you have David Davis, Dominic Raab, Jacob Rees-Mogg and Boris Johnson. And it forms this kind of strange curve where those who are in favour of Theresa May and her government policy form a spike around Theresa May, which is around 50-50. Can, you can debate whether this moves between here and here, but it's pretty much somewhere, I think it's further towards Remain than leaving because, because of the Irish backstop. And then you have people that trail off towards the side who are against May, against her government, and either want to remain or leave the European Union completely on WTO rules. And the picture is largely similar amongst the Labour Party. However, there are more cabinet members and people in general that support Jeremy Corbyn in his party than there are people that support Theresa May in her party. So you have remain adamant Remainers like Owen Smith, Sadiq Khan, and you have the significant cabinet members who seem to have been more campaigners for Remain than they were campaigners for Leave. For example, Tom Watson, Diane Abbott, Emily Thornbury, Keir Starmer, all campaigned, and John McDonnell, all campaigned for Remain. And they seem to accept the idea of a second referendum. So the Labour Party are closer to Remaining than perhaps the Conservative Party are because of the second referendum. But you do have insignificant uh, adamant Leavers, such as... Um, Giza Stewart and Frank Field, who perhaps you don't recognise the faces of, and therefore it's difficult to see Labour as the Leave party right now, because you don't hear a lot from the people on the Leave side. But then you have John McDonald, who does want a second referendum, but says it must not include the option to remain. So I hope that makes it all a lot clearer for you about where individuals and the parties stand on Brexit and it seems like because most of the important cabinet and shadow cabinet members are Remainers and it's more likely that we're going to end up remaining in a customs union or a single market than we are going to pull a no deal or remain completely and cancel Brexit because those people are in a minority because of how Britain voted. But do you agree with me? Join in the debate below and subscribe.